Hi, everybody. Welcome back to my channel. I'm Susan Lynn. I'm a psychic and a medium. Thank you very much for joining me today. Today is my inaugural video of Way Out Wednesdays. Now, the guides, my spirit guides, have pitched an idea to me that every Wednesday that I do a video on something that, for fun, could be considered way out there. Now, I'm going to be honest with you and say that a lot of these topics are not going to be that way out there for you, but on occasion, they might maybe uh, bump up against your comfort zone. So um, it's just a fun idea. We, I feel like personally, I need to talk about something different than politics. And um, I came here to earth to educate and to help all of you connect with your own spirituality in whatever way that I may do that. So here we are, Way Out Wednesdays. Thank you for joining me. Today, we're going to talk about star seeds. I'm going to help you understand, hopefully, if you are a star seed, how you are a star seed, and what does that mean for you in your life? Now, I will say, for everything you hear me say, on any topic, I'm not the expert. I am not the expert, you guys. I don't have a PhD in this. I am simply channeling my spirit guides for the information. And sometimes I could interpret it wrong or more often than not, our human consciousness is only able to accept what we can accept. When we're ready for more information or more complicated or challenging information, then you're going to seek another teacher. You're going to seek another person to help you understand this concept, maybe in a new and more expanded way. And that's fine. This is how we all grow. So please take what you can from this. If it resonates with you, wonderful. If it doesn't resonate with you, Find yourself another teacher, no harm, no foul. Throughout our lives, we're going to grow. We're going to expand our consciousness, hopefully. And you may find that another teacher resonates more or that I resonate more with you. It doesn't matter, okay? So I just want you to understand that if you hear me and my spirit guide say something and you think that doesn't quite fit with what I feel or fit with my vibration, no problem. Please find the right teacher for you. So let me explain it to you this way. In my understanding at this time, there are three groups of star seeds. Now, a star seed is an individual, is a soul that came here to earth pretty recently. Now, I'm, I'm 57. So, I mean, obviously, I came here 57 years ago. But overall, we haven't had very many incarnations here on earth. It has been told to me that I've had four incarnations here in the solar system. So you can be an old soul and only have incarnated on earth 10 times or two times or whatever. Because your soul has incarnated maybe thousands of times in other realms, other dimensions, other solar systems, whatever. Okay? So number one, you can be a new soul on earth and still be an old soul. Number two, the way I see the groups is, is like this. So group one. And, and I don't quite understand if this is one incarnation or two incarnations, or I, I don't understand where the cutoff of the numbers are. I'm not sure that I haven't had, say, six incarnations in the solar system. I think when we start to be very specific, we might run afoul of, of our understanding because, again, we are humans trying to understand something that's much bigger than we are. But let's just say people with the fewest number of incarnations here on earth. These are some of the things that I personally have seen with them. Group number one, first of all, you do not 
feel like you belong here. Now, when I say here, I mean, not only in your family, you don't understand your family. You, you don't feel like you belong with them. You may actively want to be somewhere else. You may, you may decide to run away from your family. You may decide to be estranged from your family, but also you don't feel like you belong on this planet. And you say things like, I want to go home. I just want to go home. You may say that as a young child. You may say that as a teenager. You, you may not understand why you're saying that or why you're thinking that. You may or may not understand where home is. Some of you have active memories of where that home is. You may have premonitions or visions or knowings that this isn't your home and your home actually looks like this or feels like this. Whether or not you're conscious of, of the full spectrum of that statement, I want to go home, varies dramatically. Some people have those memories. Some people don't. Some people just feel the angst that they just don't fit in here. Now, some other hallmarks are you don't understand racism. You don't understand judgment. You don't understand why we're treating the environment like our own personal toilet. That is exactly what the guide said just now. Um, you don't understand money. Why is everybody fighting each other over money? Why are they fighting each other over their skin color? Why are they even fighting? Why is everybody fighting, right? Um, you, you, food, our food is weird. You may, you may really have a strong aversion at a young age to slaughtering animals or to eating animals, or you may have a strong aversion to just certain foods. Um, you, if you're in the first group, again, once you're an adult, you might just drop out. You might just be like, I'm not getting a job. I'm not getting a degree. I don't know what this place is. I don't, I don't belong here. The, those feelings may also, also manifest as depression. Um, a lot of star seeds in sadly think about committing suicide or think about leaving this earth because they don't get it. They don't feel right here. So, but, but you, that also might come, come out in, I'm, I'm not putting up with this job. I'm not joining this rat race. I'll just make the bare, whatever minimum that I can literally make to exist. And that's good enough for me. Also, you may need to, or feel the urge to partake in drugs, to, ease the pain of this place it's a very dark earth can be a very dark place when you when when you haven't been here for a thousand lives you come from a place of peace and love and oneness and you wake up in a body and a baby the first thing you feel is pain and everything is different air breathing air is different being held is different everything is different from the minute you exit that birth canal everything is different than you've ever experienced in your existence as a soul so by the time you get to be 20 uh you may be very disillusioned with this place and the other thing that's a real hallmark of the category one star seeds or the group one, the star seeds that have the least amount of incarnations. They have bizarre medical issues. They're allergic to everything. They might be allergic to food dye. They might be allergic to their clothes. They may be allergic to the air. They may have severe asthma. They may have autoimmune disorders. They may have medical issues that no one can explain that I don't know what's wrong with you. We don't know. The guides basically say you're allergic to earth. Your body is not reacting well to the earth's atmosphere. And not only the atmosphere, but everything that humans have done 
to screw it up. So I find that these first group star seeds are super allergic to chemicals, pesticides, which are rampant in our food sources right now. You, you, it would be very hard for you to find food in the United States that didn't have a trace of something. Okay, so now group ones, they have these weird medical things. It just makes their life miserable. It's very hard on them. I think it's incredibly hard on group ones. But you know what? You get unlimited chances to come back here to Earth. <laughs> so if you if you need to check out of Earth early, or if you just feel like you didn't accomplish your mission here on your first life or your second life, you'll be back. You'll get more opportunities. It's okay. Um, I think, honestly, they don't expect much of group one star seeds. I mean, you know, basically the fact that you're here and you just try to stay as long as you can, that's enough. Truly, that is enough. That's how harsh and different this environment is. So what is the point then you might be asking about right now? <laughs> what point would a star seed have in coming here? Well, let me tell you. We are the Green Berets, the special forces of the universe. I mean, that's a little hyperbole, but not much, not much, because there's actually a cue. There's a line of souls wanting to come down here to this planet because they need, they, I'm speaking like I'm not them, but anyway, we need their help. We need starseeds help. Star seeds come here, and even if you're a group one star seed, you're still really helping the planet. And you're really helping everybody you come into contact with, whether it's your kindergarten classmates or teacher or 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 the uh checkout, the people you check out at, at Safeway. It doesn't matter because you're a star seed, your vibration is not the same as people that have incarnated a thousand times here. They've had a thousand times of incarnating, of growing their soul in a different way, but also acclimating their soul to the gravity and the sort of harshness of a dualistic world. If you've been here a thousand times, you know all about pain. You know all about suffering. You know all about betrayal. You know all about dark and light. You know all about those things. You've inculcated those things into your body. You've absorbed them. You've absorbed it into your soul. And in some ways, because you've acclimated here, you might be a little bit less flexible in your vibration. So how, how, I don't know where they're going, how, and I can't go there right now. I'm really going to stay on this track. I am not going there. You guys can circle back around and tell me at the end of this video. Okay. So how, star seeds are changing the vibration of the planet, even as a group one star seed, is just by being here because our vibration is very different. We came from peace and love. We came from not a dualistic world. We came from a, a very um, nirvana or heaven-like world where there was a lot more love and, and, and acceptance. So even though you might be a PO'd group one star seed, and you may be like spitting nails and irritated and mad. Doesn't matter. It, that doesn't matter. That's your reaction to this environment. Your vibration, because it's so fresh, is vibrating differently, which is going to affect those around you disturb their vibration, their inflexibility, 
Think about it. Think about what the guides just said. You're born into a family that doesn't match you. They're rigid. You're like, you've got this expansiveness, expansive knowing. What are you doing? Blowing their minds. What are you doing? Not following their direction, not following the societal norms. You're disrupting. You're a disruptor. So even if you're a group one doing the best you can, whether that's whether that's um, spreading peace, love, and light and becoming a yoga instructor or becoming a psychic and a medium or becoming a minister or some kind of coach or life coach or whether you do that or you're on skid row or you check out of your life early by your own design, it doesn't matter. You came here, you did what you were supposed to do. There, there's no judgment at all about this. No judgment. You took on an incredibly hard assignment. And guess what? When you cross back over, whether it's of your own design and you check out early or you gut it out to the very end of your first life here or your second life here, you're going to be having a hero's welcome because they know what you've been through. They know the sacrifice, the hardships that you've done to be here. Okay. And that's whether you're a group one, two, or three, doesn't matter. You're, you're going to have hardships no matter which group you're in, but they do lessen. Now let's move on to number two. In my opinion, my experience, group two is very similar to group one, but more often than not, they don't have the medical issues. 90% of them do not have those crazy medical things. So you, but you, you have a lot of the other things you don't fit in. You don't fit into your family. You don't feel you, you're, you're trying, you know, every time you come here, you try to, you, you try to, uh, you try to fit in more. Acclimate is the word. You try to acclimate your energy more. So when you come in for group two, you're like, okay, I'm starting to sort of remember that this is what, I mean, you don't have the memories per se, but you're starting to say, okay, 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 I get, get it. I gotta, I've got to sort of fit in more here. But what happens is your family is zigging and you're zagging. And it's not like, you don't even understand. You're like, wait a minute. Why am I different? Trying, trying a little bit. And I just can't fit in. You may, again, you don't have the, the severe health issues. You may have some, but not really severe. Um, and you're sort of like, you're sort of halfway there with the societal norms. You know, you're, you're not going to just drop out, but at the same time, you might not be all that keen on getting the degree or getting um or getting that nine to five job you still don't understand money you still don't understand why everybody's working their butts off like why are you guys sacrificing your mental and physical health for this money who cares i could live in a box under a bridge <laughs> you know or be just as happy uh working the minimum that you can work um and living in a very, you know, modest is putting it lightly place. And, and just then they were showing me a lot of these van lifers, a lot of these people. Now there's a difference between if you're, what is the new word for homeless? Uh, if you're, if you do not have a home, there's a difference between choosing this and not choosing this. Some people don't choose that. But other people are choosing to sleep in their car because they're star seeds and they don't freaking want to be in an apartment complex with a bunch of other people because that jacks up their vibration. They don't want to go with the school of fish. They're going to go, they're going to zig when everybody else is zagging. They want the freedom of living in a van or in their car. The freedom of not having somebody else tell you what to do or when to do it. So again, group two, they're not, they're not really, they're not complying with societal norms 
as much as they could be. They're choosing to be a little different. Now you could be in group two and get married and have kids and all of those things, but there's going to be something that doesn't comply to societal norms. You're going to do two steps and then you're going to like, you know, just go off onto the left field. That's what you would do as a group two. You have everything that group one has a little less, a little less of the social angst and much less of the medical, but you probably do spend time zoning out, whether that's in meditation or whether that's just in, you know, becoming isolated yourself and just not being a part of society or whether that's using drugs or alcohol, you cannot take society full on. You would be feeling uncomfortable in a mall. You'd be feeling uncomfortable in a big group of people. You don't have this sense that you belong to them. Now you may try, you may try. And certainly the closer you get to group three, the more you do try. Now, all of these groups have abilities because where we came from, we use abilities. We use our psychic abilities. We talk to each other telepathically. So you have abilities. This is a hallmark of being a star seed. And they come to you in a different way. They come to you easier. It's easier for you to tap into your abilities. Okay. Now you might say, oh, well, I'm not a star seed because I don't have any abilities. So that means I'm out. That doesn't mean that. I promise you, if you if you're ticking off the boxes and we get to abilities and you say, that's it, I'm not a star seed, not that easy. Not that easy. Part of the acclimating process of, of becoming human on earth is not sticking out any more than you than you need to. You realize it's not safe. It's truly not safe for you to be different. So you're going to keep your differences to yourself. So you're more likely actually to hide your abilities from yourself because it makes you stand out more. And your experience is, is that when you stand out, it doesn't go well for you. You get attention. You don't want attention, but I promise you, you have abilities. Now let's go to group three and group three is everything group one and two is, except they're acclimating easier. They're they're joining societal norms a little easier. Now they now honestly, they still don't feel like they fit in. They still don't fit into their family. They still don't understand racism or judgment or money or why we're using the environment as a toilet. They don't, they don't understand that. You're never going to understand that as a star seed. Never. You still don't understand what they're saying is interpersonal relationships. So you, you still might have, you may like one of your family members, you might be really close to, but several of the other ones you're not close to. You still don't you're like, I don't, I don't understand them. Right. But you may be closer to them. You may stay in contact with them. You may not be estranged from them. You may try harder to have a relationship with them, but on, on the inside, you still feel the same way. It's just that you're able to work with them more than you could as a group one or group two, okay? Also group three is acclimating in other ways. They may get that college degree. They may go for that job. They may go for that career. They may get that high paying job. They may have a nice paycheck or make a lot of money. Doesn't mean they understand it. It doesn't mean that they're going to take that money and live in an ostentatious way. It means that they'll take that money, they'll take that job, and they'll blend in. Because again, they don't want to stand out. So they'll buy the house in the neighborhood or suburb 
that allows them to be normal. They'll get the job, the marriage that allows them to be normal. Now, this isn't a capitulation of their values as a star seed. It doesn't, it doesn't mean they're turning into uh, the rest of the humans here they're supposed to be helping. It just means that they're starting to blend in. Each of these groups has a unique purpose here on Earth. And each of these groups is, you're, you don't even have to try. It's what I try to get through to you. You don't have to do anything. If you're a star seed, you're doing what you're supposed to be doing. The little energy that we're emitting is doing what we're supposed to be doing. Okay. Now, this is my understanding of star seeds. Um, that that I would say are over, uh, say, 35 in years, if you're over, say, 35 years uh, to 40 years old. Now, these new star seeds that are coming in, these kids, these kids that are now coming in now and the ones that are coming in um, up to, say, 30, 35 years old, they're a little bit different. Um, I feel that there was a, a big expansion of the star seeds. So whereas I think I was, you know, there are star seeds older than me. If you think about it, the baby boomers and and you you go into the civil rights era and you go into all the changes that happened, all the rights that were afforded women, all the rights were afforded African Americans or whoever you want to talk about. Um that was because of those star seeds that came down in this big expansion after World War II, as they're talking to me about this, you know, a lot of us empaths are star seeds. We feel everything. And it and it's a lot. It's a lot to take into our energy. And that's why the guides always say, when you feel energy, when you feel upset, or you feel depressed or sad, what we want you to do is take stock. Okay, I feel really janky, weird, or I feel sad or depressed. Okay, wait a minute, stop, take stock. Is this mine? Do I, do I really have, I mean, you know, really and truly, do I have a reason to be depressed or upset? If you do, yes, great, that, that's yours. But if you look around and you're like, no, I mean, really, I don't. I mean, I really don't. Then that's not yours. If you're depressed or upset because of Ukraine, that's not yours. If you're depressed or upset because of the election, that's not yours. Don't take that on. You're not you're not helping anybody by taking on energy that's not yours. So when you realize it's not yours, what I do, is I push it away. I literally take my hand and I push it away. While I'm doing that, I say a prayer. For whoever is being affected by that energy, may they know peace. May their suffering stop. May they be surrounded by love and light. So it is. Now, what did I do? I checked in with myself. I realized this isn't mine. Then I got rid of it. And then I took action and I sent a prayer with it. Now I feel better. So as we go through this kind of rough and tumble time we're, we're going through, you need to kind of check in with yourself and make sure that other people's energy is not becoming your problem. In the meantime, look, I hope this was helpful for you. I hope you learned something about yourself. For me, I learned that, that this is, when I finally accepted my abilities, one of the things that I learned was I connect to spirit differently than, than probably 80% of the people that do this work, maybe even 90%. And again, what was I a zebra? In the psychic class, I was the zebra in a room full of hippos. Again and again and again, the same, I'm, I'm just going to be different. I'm just going to do things differently. When I started my YouTube channel, everybody, everybody on YouTube at that time Red tarot cards. And every video, I would start off by saying, 
I don't, I don't read tarot cards. I just do things differently. I talk to my spirit guides. I had to explain it in every single video because I was different. So different is not bad. And especially if you know why you're different, it can help you understand you came here for a purpose. Your life has greater meaning than you thought it did. And it's okay. It's okay that you maybe are estranged from loved ones, or it's okay that you didn't get along with your family, or it's okay that you're right now sleeping in your car, your van. It's okay. You are okay. It's okay if you don't conform to societal norms. Because you're not from around these parts. You're not from around these parts. And two more things I would say, a friend of mine said, and this struck me, like when people speak truth to you, it strikes you, right? She said, you know, a lot of us star seeds are in the South. <laughs> I was like, oh, for the love of God, you got to be kidding me. Because of course I grew up in Kentucky, spent my most of my whole life below the Mason Dixon line. Uh, and uh, I just, I was like, yeah, right. That, that makes sense. Doesn't that make sense to you that we would all the majority of us, not all of us, I'm sure a lot of you star seeds are watching this are from the North. I mean, we got to spread us out, but I do think there's a few more extra down here in the South. And the other thing I will say is they didn't put us together. I've always asked, I've always asked, why couldn't you give us communities? Wouldn't we be more effective if we had a community? If we, if all the star seeds put out our bat signal <laughs> and and we were able to find each other. And they said to me, no, not at all. You guys would have taken refuge with, with, with each other and built a, a moat around your castle and not let any of these other freaks in. <laughs> you, you, would have you would have created your own community and you would have insulated yourself from this harsh dualistic energy. Makes sense to me. So instead they plopped my little baby self down in a family by myself and they plopped you and your family. You may have a sibling that's a star seed. You may not. You may even have a parent that's a star seed. They could be a star seed and not be awake, not be really, really connected to their other mission or where they've come from. Doesn't mean just because your sibling's a star seed could mean that they're diabolically opposite of you, right? But they do tend to separate us because we need to get the work done. We need to emit our little, our little freaky, weird uh, vibration um, by ourselves so that we can do the most good. If, if there were five of us together, I'm pretty sure we'd all be holed up in a room somewhere uh, listening to orcas or whales underwater <laughs> and, and, you know, uh, meditating and, and doing whatever we needed to do to, to basically get away from the rest of humanity. <laughs> so listen, I hope this was interesting. I plan to do a whole series of these way out Wednesdays. Um, again, this might not have been way out, but I, but I will talk about ghosts. I will talk about aliens. I'll talk about multiple dimensions and parallel realities. So guess what? We are going to go way out there. So leave me a comment in the bottom of this video and tell me what topic you would like for me to talk about next Wednesday. I would love to hear your ideas and I will consider them and we'll do this every Wednesday just for some fun till we get tired of it. All right. You take really good care of yourself and we'll see you again real soon right here on this channel.